Hello everybody and welcome to my review of this Stiga battery lawnmower. Just to be clear, this video is in no way sponsored and I did pay for this 100% with my own money. Today we're going to be looking at the Stiga Twin Clip 950 SQAE. As you can see there it does say battery and charger not included. Whilst I'm unboxing it, I'm going to very quickly run over how much I paid. So I bought this in May 2022 and I'm recording this video at the beginning of December. So since buying it, the price of some things such as the batteries have gone up in price quite a bit. So back in May, I paid for this mower, including two batteries, £1,190. I already had a charger, so I didn't buy the charger again. I think the same batteries now, I think it's the Stiga E475, the 7.5 amp hour batteries, they're around 250. Obviously that price is subject to change and different dealers are selling them for different prices, so you do have to look around a bit. The bare unit, the mower itself, is actually still the same price now as it was in May, 799, which is what I paid for it. So there we have it, the mower is out of the box. Underneath you can see we do have the blade, and this is why it's called the twin clip. You can see we actually do have that extra little blade which cuts the grass or the leaves, whatever it is you're mowing, extra finely. You can also see we do have this big vent underneath, and I did find after using this mower for several months that it does cool extremely well. In fact, it, I haven't even felt it get hot. The motor does seem to cool without any issues at all. Now just to point out the rubber, that sort of white powdery effect is totally normal. When rubber does this it's called blooming and basically it just makes insoluble particles in the rubber come to the surface. I found that just by using the mower the uh, white particles did just wash off so nothing to be concerned about. It's easy to see what height you're on because there is a little dial which shows you exactly what number the mower is set to. Inside the box we also do have several mouldings, such as the side discharge chute and the mulch plug. I'm now going to demonstrate fitting the bag. The first time I did this I was a little confused, but once you've done it a few times it's dead easy. It quite literally is a plug-in box. If of course you don't want to be using the bag, then all you have to do is either fit the mulch plug or the mulch plug and the side discharge chute if you want to be side discharging. It's now time to fit the two batteries. This is easily done by lifting the top cover above the motor and clipping them into place. You can see we do have the red knob in there. That is the main on and off. Once in the on position, it's quite simple to switch on on the dashboard. Just a simple on off button and an eco button. Eco is really good I found because if you're not mowing really thick, long or wet grass, you can just run the motor at a slower speed and save energy. The cutting deck is easily engaged by pressing in the yellow button and then pulling back the front lever. The drive is engaged by pushing forward the rear lever. This mower also has a variable speed self propelled drive which can be adjusted using the knob on the side of the mower. So here we go, let's go for a quick demonstration as I'm going to be mostly using this as a mulching mower. I'm so excited to get going with it. So let's see how well it will mulch this area of grass. As I said, this is May, so the grass is growing quite quickly and it's very lush. After mowing for around 20 minutes or so, it has lost one bar of charge, which I think is quite impressive. After using the mower for several months, I found that if I was mowing relatively short grass on a nice dry day, the batteries would last for over an hour. But if I was picking up lots of leaves, for example, and the motor was having to work quite hard, it was probably about 30 to 40 minutes.
Now it's time to see how well the mower will mulch a formal lawn. As I said, it is May and the grass is extremely lush. It's not very long, but it's very dense. So this is a very good test for it. I quickly discovered that the mulcher does actually like to put the grass all onto one side and it leaves a sort of swath. The grass wasn't wet, but it was very, very juicy, very lush. So um, maybe that's got something to do with it. If it was really dry grass, it may not leave the same finish. After I had finished mowing all of my lawns that day, I decided to remove the two batteries to give them a full charge. The next day, I came back and re-mowed the lawn where it was leaving swaths to see what sort of a finish it would leave if you went over it again for a second time. As you can see, the results do speak for themselves. The cut was beautiful. The only little issue is the swathing of the grass, but then if it was more regularly mowed, this may not be an issue. And also, if it certainly wasn't as lush, then it would be much easier for it to process as well. It's now June and I have been leaving this piece of grass intentionally for one test to see how the mower performs when you put it straight into a really tall bit of grass. Will the motor cut out? After mowing this clump of grass, I was left very impressed. It did not seem to struggle at all, and the motor even seems to increase in power when it goes into a really thick clump of grass. This was so good to see. As we moved into July, the UK started experiencing some extremely high temperatures. We actually did hit over 40 degrees Celsius, uh, which is a new record. That is very unusual for here. But this meant that the trees started to lose their leaves early. I was already gonna show you the leaf collecting with this mower in the autumn, but I guess I can start now. After picking up some willow leaves, I did discover that this mower has no problem at all in picking them up. It doesn't seem to leave any embedded into the grass, so it does leave a nice, clean finish. The bag is full. You can actually see when the bag is full, looking at the little yellow flap on the back of the bag. It will close when the bag is full. I put the leaves in the compost bin, so it all rots down and makes a nice mulch for the garden. There's a nice handy handle on the back of the bag, so it does make emptying the bag very simple. And also there's no sort of crevices where all the leaves and grass can get stuck. It does empty quite easily. The heat wave has intensified. Yes, the days of mowing that really lush green grass have gone. As you can see, it's more like a desert than a lawn. At this point I was thinking, why did I choose 2022 to test a lawnmower? I decided just to put the mower in the shed. I could have gone chasing blades of grass, but as you can see, it would have been a waste of time. The slightest bit of grass that there was was uh, very short and thin, so I just had to wait for the rain to return. September has arrived, and so has some rain, and a lot of leaves. The leaves were piling off the trees like they do in October and November, so I might as well start the autumn cleanup, although a bit early and see how good this mower is at picking up much denser piles of leaves. This shot is just to show you how much area I did cover before the bag was full. Obviously, leaves are very bulky, so you can't get that many into the bag. However, thanks to the twin clip system, you do get much finer leaves in the bag, so it does fill up the space much better rather than having lots of air gaps everywhere. I had a hunt around and I couldn't actually find a complete leaf. Every leaf had at least been cut in half.
With all the leaves cleared off the lawn, you can now see what the lawn looks like. It does look very bad compared to what it was like in May, but it's slowly recovering. It's time for another load test. I've made a big pile of leaves here. I'm going to try and pick up all of them in one bag load and also see how the motor performs. After this test, I was even more impressed than after the dense grass test. It was absolutely incredible that it could not only fit all of this into one bag, but it could actually process it all. This mower is very powerful. After two more months of mowing and picking up loads of leaves, it's time to put the mower away for the winter. So the best way of cleaning these, in my opinion, is with a compressed air hose. This way you can clean it all off very nicely without wetting everything. Uh, obviously, electricity and water do not mix, so this is a good dry solution. No risk of damaging the motor or any other electrics. You can see how caked up the underside of the deck is, just like any mower, after it's been mowing lots of wet long grass and lots of leaves, and fruit actually, I've been mowing in orchards, but it hasn't really been collecting all of the mulched up leaves in all of the areas underneath the guard, so around the gearbox, it seems quite clean. Now obviously damage can occur to any mower, and when I was doing a bit of mowing underneath some bushes, I accidentally did scratch the top cover. This was actually done on this shrub that you can see on screen now. It is quite a low shrub, it's also quite sharp, but I thought I'd just show you that, yeah, this was a genuine bit of damage, and shrubs can scratch the top of the cover, so it's best to be careful with that. Another really nice feature this mower has is the ability for the handlebars to fold all the way down and then it can store in the upright position. Obviously this is not normally done with a petrol mower because the oil and the petrol can leak out, but with a battery mower, you can store it vertically. I take the batteries out and store them inside. So what do I think of the Steger Twin Clip 950? Well, I think it's got a very high quality cut. It's environmentally friendly. There's no fumes because obviously it does not have an internal combustion engine. It feels very well built. It doesn't feel plasticky in any way or cheap. It has a large 48 centimeter cutting width. There's no engine to service or maintain, which obviously is really nice. So it's easy and that does make it cheaper because servicing mowers isn't cheap necessarily. Also, some people don't have their mowers serviced and this causes expensive wear and tear. The mower is also easy to use. It has a four-in-one system, so it's multi-purpose. You can collect, mulch, side discharge, and rear discharge. And it's very easy to store. It does have other positives as well, but these are the main ones in my opinion. As for negatives, it is quite expensive. After doing some research, I discovered the petrol equivalent to this mower, the Steger Twin Clip 950V, is priced at £1,149. Whereas this one, the Twin Clip 950 EV, which I'm guessing is the superseded model of this one, it seems to be the same spec, but I couldn't find my one on the Steger official website. It's priced at 1,350 plus the batteries plus the charger. When everything that's required has been added to the shopping basket, the total does come to 1,997 pounds. Although, as I said, some dealers are selling this mower for much less. So it is worth having a look around, but it's still much more expensive than the petrol alternative. There is a waiting time to recharge the batteries, whereas with the petrol you can just refuel it if you've got all the petrol with you. Although arguably if you do have multiple batteries, then you could then just swap and then whilst the other ones are charging up again, you can uh, yeah use the replacement batteries. And finally, this is something that I found while testing it. The mulcher can sometimes leave a line of grass on one side. This doesn't happen every time. It does depend on what you're mowing. But I found that with my relatively short but very dense lush grass, it does tend to do this. Uh, when the weather was much drier, it didn't do it. So yeah, it's sort of an intermittent issue, you could call it, but not a major problem. It's still an extremely good mower. So in summary, my personal opinion on this mower is that it's absolutely fantastic, so nice to use, and very nice not to have the fumes. Overall, I'd give it a rating of nine out of 10. Uh, the biggest thing there really was the price, um, but maybe in the future, the cost of these battery machines will come down a bit, we can hope. Um, but yes, despite this, nine out of 10, 
extremely good and I really do recommend getting it. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video, hopefully you found it helpful, and until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.